Colby, congratulations on a uh, very thorough victory this evening. I'm just curious how you're feeling after the performance tonight. Ten push-ups, John. Congrats. Hey, Colby. Hey, what's up, Helen? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. A real journalist who doesn't write with their feelings and talks about fighters not being deserving. So I would love to answer your question. What do you have for me? Well, first off, congratulations on the great performance and the fight of the night. Uh, I'm just curious, first off, after training with Jorge in the past, did anything in there surprise you at all? No, nah, nothing in there surprised me. Another dominant finish. You know, whooped his ass from second one to May 25. He, you could see in his body language he had nothing left in the fight. I was ready for five more rounds in the parking lot. So, you know, if he, if he wants to keep doing this, we'd go for five more rounds in the parking lot. You know, bring out another guy, man, American trash team, man. They, they need to keep sending guys to me, but just don't expect to get them back in one piece. You know, I'm ready to take two of those fighters in one night. The King of Man Miami showed out tonight. I know afterwards you called out Dustin Poirier, but for you, would it be more meaningful to fight Dustin or Kamaru Usman for a third time? Uh, definitely Marty Fake Newsman a third time. I got unfinished business with him when I left the arena in Madison Square Garden. All the fans knew I won rounds three, four, and five. But, you know, he's going to be out for a while. He's got that hand surgery. So, you know, I figure I'll get another tune-up fight with Dustin Poirier, who said it's on site, you know. And he weighs more than me. He's just a bully who cuts a lot of weight. I don't cut any weight because I know I'm the best in the world. And I don't need to have a weight advantage over anybody. So, Dustin, name, name the site, you know, bring that Jezebel of a wife and bring little, Connor's little kid, Parker. Well, after training with both Dustin and Jorge, do you feel that Dustin will be a tougher opponent than Jorge was tonight? I mean, you, you saw George, you know, he just come out to took that losing paycheck. There's a reason he signed that contract before he fought me tonight. He knew he couldn't beat me. You know, he knew if he put up his best performance like he did tonight, that was my worst performance, and it was still an easy night of work for me. So I beat them both up in the same night. I used to do it every Tuesday and Thursday at American Trash Team. So... Bring him out. You know, he's talking all that reckless thing to the, to the media. So I talk the talk. I walk the walk. I'm a man of my word. Promises made, promises kept. And lastly, both of them have fought at 155 before. Would you ever consider moving down to 155 in your career? I wouldn't because I don't want to cut all that weight. I think I can make 162 very easily. Like, 170 is a joke, man. I, I, I was running to the scale. Like, I felt so good. I was like, man, this is such an easy weight cut. Like, I didn't miss one meal. I, I You know, I, I had all my meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. So it's an easy weight cut, but I'm not a bully. I don't need to bully guys at, at lightweight. That's an easy-ass division, and there's no reason for me to cut all that weight. I'd rather just fight in my natural weight class and prove I'm the best in the world like I did tonight. Dustin, over here. Colby over here. Uh, you called. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, there was. A, you just said uh, you you felt this was one of your worst performances. What specifically about this uh, made makes you uh, make that assessment? Well, first off, I want to say, man, it is so cold in here, man. I got all this ice on my neck. Can, can we can we turn up the the temperature up in here? I'm I'm freezing up here. You see all this ice on my neck, man? Frick, man. I got a house on my neck, man. But. Uh, yeah, it wasn't my best performance. Uh, just a lot of emotions going into it, you know. That, that was a, a real friend of mine at one point in my career. And, you know, just he's a, such a backstabbing thief, and he talks so reckless. And he's tried to make some false narratives to the media, make a lot of lies, like he does. He's a, he's a liar. You know, he's a thief. So, you know, I, I, let, I let the emotions get the best of me. And, but, you know, it was still dominant. I just showed how good I was, that I am the number one fighter in the re world for a reason. And it wasn't even competitive tonight. The broadcast made it seem like you might have had a knee injury. Even Jorge said that he heard some rumors that maybe you got a cortisone shot. How accurate was that? That's fake news. I, I, it's funny that that happened because I told someone intentionally because I wanted to see whose side he was really on, Team George or Team Colby. So I found out what team he's on, and I got to keep my circle even smaller going forward. But, you know, I'm the king of Miami now. George needs to leave the city, you know. This, it's not big enough for the two of us. So he needs to leave or he's going to get sparked again. We couldn't hear what was uh, being said. It was muted back here, but it even looked like your coaches were yelling at Jorge and his team. What exactly were, was being said in there after the fight? Yeah, he was just still running his mouth. Like, dude, you just got pounded out, dude. You got dropped, wobbled. I mean, just a complete domination from second one to minute 25. You, you could see in his body language, he literally didn't have another one minute in him to go. So just imagine if there wasn't a ref there tonight, his life would have been over. So that's the end of Street Judas. I don't want to hear any more talk of Street Judas, the hype machine who hit lightning in a bottle for a couple fights. He's done. We don't want to, I don't want to hear another word about him.
think, I don't know if you've seen this, but Dustin Poirier has responded to you on Twitter. Well, we assume it's to you. He's currently in Jamaica, I think, right now on vacation. He called you a bumbaclot uh, and said, maybe fight a welterweight contender. Uh, I, so what's your response to that? Let's do it, bro. He said it's on site, man. Let's, let's do it, man. Stop talking reckless to the media, man. If, if I talk to the media and say things, I come out here and back it up. I'm a man of my word. So, you know, I, I, we can do it anywhere. We don't have to do it in a UFC octagon. If he wants to do it in a park or in the street, my only one concern is my one stipulation is, you know, you let the world watch and enjoy themselves, just like he does when Connor's in bed with his wife. He's a little cuck. Colby. Uh, down, Colby. Down here. Um, I know you don't respect George on, on a personal level, but as a competitor, after sharing the octagon with him for 25 minutes, is there any, any sort of respect there? Let's talk about all the, the money that Drake lost tonight. He needs to go back to, you know, selling those shitty albums to get back the money. He should have went to America's Pick of the Week by my bookie. I tried to give the people the pick of the week. I'm America's champ, and I was America's Pick of the Week. Drake, you suck at sports betting. Go back to your shitty little albums of rapping. Um. Uh, that side, no, that side. Uh, any level of respect to him as a competitor at all? Absolutely not. How can you respect that guy? He's a thief. He went to jail multiple times for grand theft. He's tried to compare himself to say he's on the, the same knowledge level as me. The guy didn't graduate middle school. I, I tried to ask him one simple question. How does a bill become a law? He couldn't tell me how a bill becomes a law. The, guy, the guy's a fraud. He's a phony. He knows nothing about politics, and he got exposed for the journeyman he was tonight. And how active do you, do you want to be this, this year? I want to be very active. I'd love to fight three times. I want to come back and fight International Fight Week in July, come back to Sin City, you know, the, the fight capital of the world. It's so convenient to fight here in Las Vegas. We got the UFC PI. You know, they do a great job. Shout out to Heather Linden, uh, Bobby, and Charles. They did a great job of, of uh, just keeping me well-fed all week and just massages and just, you know, top-notch facilities. You can't complain when you fight in Vegas. It's the best in the world, so I'd love to come back. Hey, Colby, to your left here. I wonder, the, the, you went, beat Dos Anjos for the title. Does this fight compare with that, this win? Weren't you just writing an article talking shit? Like, I always try and be nice to you. I was I, talking shit? Yeah, you said some stupid-ass shit about George in this fight, man. You're fake news, man. No one wants I to... I didn't say that. I, I ain't answering you either. Next question. Colby, right here, just one question. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about the pay-per-view points. Why did you give up the pay-per-view points, and was there some sort of trade-off in the contract? Because I told Hunter Campbell, you know, this fight, I didn't care about the money. I wanted to come out here and fight this guy because he's talked so reckless. I, I, I was willing to take a pay cut. I didn't care. I would have fought this guy for free. I'm sick of this guy running his mouth. There's no, he can't talk and walk his walk. You know, he can't talk to talk and walk to walk like I do. So I was willing to fight this guy for free. It wasn't about money tonight. This is a personal rivalry that needed to be settled, and it got settled. So, you know, now that was the last of Street Judas, and we're not going to hear any more of him. Great, Colby, thanks. Just in front Colby of you here. right here. Straight up. Uh, Colby, uh, I asked Warrior, he said that he was saying some words to you during the fight. Can you talk about what you might have said to him during the fight? Yeah, I was telling him, yeah, I'm, I'm still your daddy. You know, you know who your daddy is. I'm the king of Miami. So take this ass whooping like the little bitch. I'm glad you came out and, you know, took this ass whooping. But let's talk about uh, Cain Velasquez, man. Free Cain, man. A lot of people, what he did, a lot of people, you know, would have, wouldn't have done the same thing, but I respect the shit out of him. I mean, having a kid, your kid be molested. I mean, we talk about that all the time. Like, we would do that, but he was in that situation. He actually did it. So, free Kane, Kane Velasquez, much respect and love, and I hope you get out soon. I have an additional question. Um, there was so much going into this fight. You've been part of some big fights already. When it's all said and done for your, your career, what are you going to reflect on most that you're most proud of getting the W in this particular event? Selling out another arena, just like Madison Square Garden, fourth highest gate in Madison Square Garden, my last fight, you know, selling big pay-per-views, doing good business for the UFC, sold out T-Mobile Arena tonight, another electrifying crowd, you know, I'm sure the pay-per-views are through the roof, uh, you know, I'm just going to remember, you know, doing what I did best, you know, being a man of my word and, you know, doing good business for the UFC, the company that I love so much, man, I have so much respect for Hunter Campbell, Dana White, and all the, the UFC brass for what they've done and what they've built with this company, so... I love being a UFC fighter, and I want to be a UFC fighter for life. Congratulations. Kobe, just in front of you here. Obviously, you know, you just said you sold out the arena. You, took a, you didn't take pay-per-view points for this one because it meant so much to you. But given, you know, you mean so much to the company, you sold out this arena, is that something you'd want for your next fight? You know, I, I love it. I think I deserve it, you know. Con you know, George just signed his contract right before the fight because he knew he was going to get his ass whooped, and he wasn't going to have any le leverage or power to negotiate after I whoop his ass on, on Monday morning. So... 
you know, I want to be paid more than George Masvidal now. He likes to rub that in his face that, you know, oh, I make more money than you, this and that. I mean, first off, no, he doesn't because he pays half of it to Maritza, his ex-wife. So he doesn't make more money than me. But secondly, I need to be making more money than George. The guy's a flash in the pan, you know, two pump chump like his ex-wife Maritza said. And, you know, he's 37 years old, man. I'm 30. I just turned 34, you know, two weeks before this fight. I'm in my prime. I'm getting better every single day, and you haven't seen the best of me. So, you know, I still got a long, long career ahead of me. And Masvidal was in here, and he said, you know, it was one of, not one of his good performances. Were you surprised that you were able to hold him down? Did you expect more from him? No, I didn't expect more. You know, he, you know that was his best performance he's ever had in his life. You know, he knows every time we train. You know, last time we trained, left him unconscious with a high kick, fake takedown, high kick. So the guy's irrelevant. I don't want to hear any more about him. He, you know, he was you know, lightning in a bottle. Shouldn't even been here in the first place, but he's lucky he, he got the main event tonight because they were going to bury on the card. He was supposed to fight Edward Scissorhands three fights down. You know, I brought him to a main event pay-per-view fight, so he should be thanking me and counting his chickens. And finally, just one for more from me. Um, Hamzat Chmaev reacted to your fight. He was cage side. He called it a BS fight. If he beats Burns, he could be right next to you in terms of a title contention. Have you ever looked at Hamzat? Have you ever watched any of his fights? I don't watch fights of people who have, what, three, four fights in the UFC. I mean, he should be mad at his mom. His mom named him Cumshot. Like, that's embarrassing, man. Like, don't get mad at me, bro. Get mad at your mom. She named you Cumshot. Thank you, Kobe. Hey, Kobe. How you doing, mate? Um, Henry Ford once said that a best friend is somebody who brings out the best in them. And tonight, we kind of saw that in a similar backwards sense of the phrase. Um, so how much more heart and drive did Masvidal give you as opposed to fighting anybody else? Uh, not much more. I, I took this off the couch, man. I was in Aspen, Colorado when the UFC called for me to take this fight. And I was skiing the slopes, not even training. I was going to take a little bit of time off after the fight in Madison Square Garden. I had such a big chip on my shoulder. And, and I know Usman was going to be out for a while with his hand surgery. So I was like, you know. I didn't think I was going to get a fight. And so I, I, I had like a four or five week training camp and, and this is what I did. Just imagine when I'm going to get an eight, nine week focused training camp, specific game plan for who I'm going to compete against. It's not going to be close. These guys are going to start getting finished. But the beauty of what I did tonight is there's, there's no luck. There wasn't like a fluke knockout. It wasn't, you can't say, oh, you know, oh, he got a lucky knockout. What, what would have been if it would have kept going? I completely dominated that guy from start to finish. I'm the best fighter in the world, pound for pound champ, America's champ, people's champ, Donald Trump's favorite fighter, and the king of fucking Miami. Hey, Colby, great victory, man. Shmo, thanks, buddy. I appreciate you. Question for you, because when Dana White came in here, he didn't know what was next. How do you envision the pathway to getting another crack at the welterweight strap? Yeah, I got to get back to work. You know, I, I'm, not, I'm completely injury-free. I'm healthy, so... You know, I want to fight in July. I think that's a perfect timeline to get back in there. And uh, I think what's next is Dustin, man. He said he's on site, you know. He said, oh, we're going to jail, this and that. So let's fight, man. He's, he said it's bulking season. He's, he wants to come up and fight Nate at 170. He don't have a fight. Nate's fighting Connor. So there's no other fights for Dustin. He's to come take this losing paycheck just like his boy George just did. When you talk to former President Trump again, what do you think that conversation is going to sound like? Uh, it's going to be a great conversation, man. Mr. 45, President Trump, greatest living American and greatest president in history, man. The things he did for this country, all you liberals out there that say he didn't, look, look at inflation, look at you know, our open borders. Our, our fucking country is going to shit right now without him. So we need him back in 2024, Trump 2024, and, and you know he's going to come back and, and make America great again.